and the pressure is nothing but the reciprocal of the summation of uh, Z i over V above pressure i. So once we have calculated the bubble pressure and the dew pressure, we can make sure that the total pressure is between them and definitely in this case it is between them so our system is flushable. So I'm going to uh, right now to revert to the calculation of the flash calculations and I'm going to calculate the Ki the distribution coefficient which is nothing but the vapor pressure divided by the total pressure and this is one of the your error traps. Make sure, regardless of the number of components, that you have one component at least that have a Ki greater than one and a Ki at least a, one component having a Ki less than one. That is one component at least should have a distribution coefficient greater than one and one component at least should have a distribution coefficient less than one for your system to be flashable and this condition is met. I will calculate Ki minus one and then zi ki minus one. Now, using the formula that we have devised previously for a binary system, I'm going to sum up those two terms, which is the, the numerator, and multiply those two terms, which are the uh, denominator, and calculate the v from them. It's 0.76. What does it uh, mean? It is, it says that the vapor fraction is about three quarters of the feed. That is, of the total feed flow rate, three quarters of that feed flow rate will end up as vapor, and one quarter will end up as liquid. To evaluate the xi's and yi's, I can also go back to PowerPoint and evaluate the yi and xi from this uh, table. And once again, make sure if your vapor fraction is calculated correctly, your, the summation of your xi's and yi's should end up as unity. If your vapor fraction is not correct, you will never end up in a summation that is unity. This is using the form, simplified form that I have used. Another type of calculation is using solver, which is a numerical method, uh, in, fa a numerical method in fact. And I'm going to use the initial guess of V as 0.5. The calculations up to here are the same as the one above, but I'm going to use individual terms in the rashford rice equation, which are zi ki minus 1, calculated here, divided by 1 plus over V times ki minus 1 for each component, and sum of this. Notice that because the initial guess is not the actual answer, what do we have right now? I'm not going to divide it by M8, I'm going to divide it by C14. Same thing here, C14. Do this, notice that the summation of yi's and xi's are not unity because the v is not the correct value. What I'm going to do is to use the solver. If I go to data and excel and solver, I can define my target or set objective. My objective should be that this summation, which is the rashford rice equation, is zero by default. So I'm going to tell them uh, excel, the solver in excel, uh, that the value of zero. How am I going to change this value is by changing the vapor fraction here and I'm going to tell Excel to solve and notice now our vapor fraction whether using the simplification that we told, uh, told you before and the iterative method using Excel's uh, solver are almost the same so this is one way of solving things what I'm going to write now do is have another example that has a ternary component in them. 
which are a BTX once again. We have the temperature as 400 Kelvin and 1.5 bars is to be fed to a flash drum. The composition is ZI.4.2.4. Note that flash calculations in isothermal flash calculations, we are given the mole fractions in the field, the temperature and the pressure. So I'm going again to Excel. And once again, this is the temperature, the pressure, bubble pressure, the first things first, as we mentioned, dew pressure. And notice that our total pressure is bracketed between the bubble and dew pressures. Now, the initial guess that I told you before, it's B bubble minus P over PB minus PD is a very good initial guess indeed. In this case, I'm going to start with 0.5, for example. And notice once again that your XIs and YIs and the rashford rice equation are not zeros. So I'm going to use solver once again and solve. Notice now, what do we have? It's V is 0.61 in this case. We, we can study so many things in uh, this case. For example, notice what is the influence of changing the total pressure closer to B bubble. You will find that V will be reduced and L will be increased. So if I give him 1.8 bars. Once again, this is not the correct V. I'm going to tell solver to solve again. And solve this. Notice what, what's the vapor fraction right now? It's 0.25. Why is it 0.25? And the initial guess from the better equation, the heuristic that I have told you before, it's very close to this. Why is it reduced to 0.25? Because the total pressure is getting closer to the bubble pressure. If it's getting to bubble pressure, then the amount of liquid increases and the amount of vapor decreases. What happens if I give him 1.3, for example? Once again, solver and solve this. Now we have 91.7875, I'm sorry, uh, vapor uh, and on almost 0.08 uh, liquid in this case. So I will revert back to the 1.5 and solver and solve this once again. Save this. Now to analyze those things. Now to analyze the results of the flash calculations, first thing is look at the ZIs and compare them to your XIs and YIs. If your solution is correct, then XI and YI should bracket ZI. That is, ZI should fall between XI and YI. For example, for benzene, in the feed it's 0.4, in the liquid it's 0.21 and uh, 22. I'm sorry, and the vapor phase it's 0 0.51. 0 0.4 is between 0.22 and 0.51. Toluene 0.2 between 0.19 and 0.2 uh, something. 0.4 for xylene is between 0.59 and 0.28. So why is this happening and why is this correct? Simply because in benzene, notice benzene is enriched in the vapor phase because it's the more volatile component. So if it's enriched in the vapor phase, naturally it should be depleted in the liquid phase. That is why your YI is reduced. And uh, on the other hand, for xylene, xylene is enriched in the liquid phase and is reduced or depleted in the vapor phase. Now, this is an example for your convenience to solve it. From a historical point of view, there was a typical uh, charts because they did not have the computational power that we have now. One of those most famous charts is the pre-star chart for the determination of K values. The pre-star chart is nothing but a nomograph. And in the nomograph, what do we have in here? We have pressure on this side, temperature on this side, and so many components on this side. For example, imagine that we have zero degrees Celsius and 1,000 I'm sorry that uh, the line is not correct in this case, but at least 
it's better to have it zero up to 1000 directly we can calculate that or determine that the k for methane is about 17 or 18 for ethylene it's about five five and a half for ethane it's about three and a half and for example for n octane it's about 0 0.002 in this uh, area so we can opt to calculate all those keys uh, all those keys once and evaluate our dew point or bubble point or flash calculations using the rashford rice equation as we mentioned before instead of using something like Antoine equation or any other simulator uh, this is convenient in the old times that right now we have our simulators and we can resort to them for example to HISIS and I'm going to show you the solution this is a new case for HISIS I'm sorry for the inconvenience it just needs some time to load component lists we have to add benzene toluene and xylene metazylene and in the fluid packages as we mentioned before we are using Raoult's law so Antoine equation is more than sufficient in this case and we are ready for our simulation and for flash calculations we need to use a flash separator flash separator in HISIS is here so I'm going to put stream 1 here stream 2 here and stream 3 here and I'm going to fill stream 1 which is the feed stream right now with temperature of 400 kelvins and pressure of 1.5 bars and molar flow rate is unity and the composition is 0.4 0.2 and 0.4 and this is an okay and notice what happens right now everything is solved in HISIS and if I go to the worksheet and notice that the vapor fraction is 0.6218 while the value we have calculated is 0.6127 and in the composition part for example if we look at benzene it's 0.215 and 0.51 it's 0.219 and 0.51 so uh, there is uh, agreement between high solution and our solution using Raoult's law and uh, for the Brewster uh, it's uh, historical uh, interest rather than uh, applications right now uh, general flash approach what you need to do really is to combine uh, the material balance and the energy balance and the equilibrium relationship that's all you need a difference between uh, isothermal flash calculations and non-adiabatic uh, non or general flash approach we need to add the general energy balance in this case and this makes uh, a huge difference usually in the results and uh, thank you for your uh, attention and next time we are going to discuss the fugacity and its mathematics uh, in general and thank you